We are in Jerusalem, and it is in Jerusalem that my journey started in diaspora. What fascinated me was not so much Jerusalem in the 80s, but how these people managed to recreate in Jerusalem, in the heart of the Middle East, a shtetl, an Eastern European town that cannot be found today even in Europe. And what fascinated me was how these people still live in diaspora in the heart of the Middle East. It was only 10 years later that I understood that Mea Shearim was in fact the matrix of my entire project. We are very far from Jerusalem, in the far east of the former Soviet Union, in the middle of the Taiga, in the very place where Stalin, in the 30s, sought of a state for the Jews. And people came, not only from Russia and Ukraine, but also from Argentina, France, America. They went there to build the Jewish state, 20 years before Medinat Israel was established. General Abram Davidovich Dragunsky, former leader of the anti-Zionist committee, Brezhnev's man, a Jew himself, one of those Jews who dug the graves of other Jews. Sara, a kolkhoz worker, Ilinka, a village deep in Russia. When I entered this room, I was just fascinated by the incredible capacity to take on so many identities, even that of Mujik. Doesn't the portrait of the grandfather above the bed look like an icon? Oba, Krasnaya Sloboda, in Azerbaijan, near the Caspian Sea. Central Asia, Margellan, not far from the Chinese border, standing under the sukkah, the grandfather, who was a Stalinist, and his grandson, a komsomol, a young pioneer. Years later, I met this very man's son when I took a picture of taxi drivers in New York City. Bukhara, Central Asia. At the time of Hoshana Rabbah, there is a tradition of learning all night, and here, obviously, there are nearly no books, and there is hardly anybody who still knows how to read Hebrew but it is after midnight, and people still stay. Chaykhana, Ruba, Azerbaijan. I thought it was important to document the life and existence of Jews like these who had created flourishing culture, poetry, theater, music, and their own Judeo-Persian dialect, because they were always at the very margin of mainstream Jewish culture, known at best to a few scholars, and I wanted to re-inscribe them in the chronicle of the Jewish people. I have never thought in terms of minor or major diasporas. A Jewish barber shop, Leninabad, Tajikistan. All the barbers are Jews. All the customers are Tajik Muslims. Mark Twain says, Jews are just like everybody else, only more so. I didn't foresee that 10 years later I would go to Israel and trace 20 families that I had photographed in different countries and then portray them in Israel. I found almost all the barbers, but of course, the customers needed to be replaced. In the Simeon Mountains, not far from Eritrea, and it is hard for me to tell that these women are indeed the contemporaries of so many people I photographed in so many countries. The same women in Israel, except for the ones who died while escaping to Sudan. Ambover, province of Gondar. Early in the morning, Shawada, Simeon Mountains. Lewi, who is eight years old, studying in his grandfather Daud's jewelry workshop in Haidan. Yemen. He is now in Rehovot. He has just emigrated to Israel. He is 16, his wife is 14, and they just had their first child. We are at the border of Saudi Arabia. More and more, I came to see diaspora as a metaphor for fertilizing, how Jews have been fertilized and how they are fertilized in return. God's injunction to Abraham in Genesis Lech Lecha, 
Go forth, leave your land, your kindred, the house of your father, and go to the place I will show you. We are in a blacksmith workshop, still in Yemen. Here are three children learning from one book. They have so few books that they have developed a tradition of reading upside down and sideways. The older brother in the background is following in the book to see if they are singing well. And the father, the blacksmith, knows the text by heart and corrects them. Calcutta. But in fact, it's really Baghdad in Calcutta. Some Jews escaped Baghdad in the mid-19th century and went not only to Calcutta, but to Bombay, Rangoon, Shanghai, Hong Kong, Singapore, and I trace their routes of escape. This project is a puzzle that I have been piecing together, but it is also like a game of matryoshka, a game of Russian dolls. Jews are a caste in Indian society, and they are known as a caste of people who press oil. When you go to a village, Indians, whether Hindu or Muslim, haven't heard of Jews. They know about the Shanwarteli, which in the Marathi dialect means the oil press man who doesn't work on Shabbat. Awas, a small village. I try to include in the photographs some sign of what each community has kept of its identity. On the upper left side of the photograph, you can see a hand. There is a tradition among the Bene Israel to slaughter a sheep on the eve of Passover, to place a hand in the blood and to mark the wall of the house, in order to remember that the Jews were saved from the plague which killed the firstborn in Egypt. Belmonte, Portugal. Certainly the most extraordinary example of survival. We are not talking of 50 years, not even 100 years, but of 500 years, the last group of Maranos. Officially, these people are Catholics, baptized, married, and buried by the priest. Yet, underneath, they have kept a complete double identity. They keep the Shabbat, they keep the fast of Esther, Yom Kippur, and Passover. For them, the secret became part of the ritual. It is a ritual within the ritual. Across 20 countries, I found that the communities of Sephardic Jews have become very different one from another, and like the image the term Sephardic Jews conveys or their common origin might suggest. Here we are in Bordeaux. This is a tribute to the Rabbah family. Yan Ben Walid, Tangier, Morocco. If you open a picaresque novel, he is what you will find. For me, he is a Don Quixote. Abraham and Irma Lopez Cardoso in the Spanish-Portuguese synagogue, New York City. Isaac Masayas, a Judeo-Spanish Bobby, Gibraltar, in front of Bevis Mark Synagogue. Dias de Mesquita, Gomez Brito, the Jews have truly been the ambassadors of the Iberian spirit. But the amazing thing is how the people call themselves by the names of the country which kick them out and how they reclaim an identity of which they have been deprived. The most beautiful example is the Jews expelled from Castilla who went to Tetuan. They built a cemetery and called it Cemeterio de Castilla. And they turned their tombstones not toward Jerusalem, but towards Castilia. Sofia, Bulgaria, the Astrukov family, the doctor of Theodor Zhivkov, former president. Sarajevo, two months before the war, the parents live today in London and the daughter lives in Madrid. Manaus, on the Amazon River, at the time of rubber boom, Jews left mainly from Tenji and Rabbah in search of new opportunities and went all along the Amazon River from Belém de Pará to Iquitos. Here are the Benchimol at the opera. The Curiel family. 
I like this photograph because of the many layers. You have the Dutch room, the French room, and also look at the azuleros being reflected in the mirror above the flowers. Saloniki, Greece. I only took one photograph. 96% of the community was exterminated in the Holocaust. How to remain such an Hidalgo in such a Calvinist society? David Cohen Pereira looks more like a figure in a Velázquez painting than a man who lives in Amsterdam and whose ancestor arrived there from Portugal 400 years ago. The Jewish Theological Seminary, New York City. How Jews have reinvented themselves in America, this extraordinary experimental laboratory which never existed, at least not on this scale, not even in the Hellenistic period. And also how women have played a major role in restoring a vertical dimension, a spiritual dimension within Judaism. Nice Jewish boy, a moving company in Palm Beach, there is not a single Jew here. Jews with hogs, Miami Beach, in front of Knesset, Israel. St. Lawrence Island, Alaska, Perry Green. His father was born in a small shtetl near Bialystok. He read Jack London and dreamed of making it to Alaska. His son has spent most of his life in the bush. First spiritual gathering between Jews and Navajos. The story of two genocides. How Indian Americans not only were killed, but were then put in reservations, and we know that they died by the thousands. And the idea was for us Jews to understand their notion of the sacredness of the land, and for them to understand how we Jews survived with a portable identity through 5,000 years of history. Billings, Montana, the far west, only 40 Jewish families. Somebody threw a stone in a Jewish home. This was the culmination of a series of anti-Semitic acts. The sheriff of the town published a full-page ad in the newspaper asking the entire population to display a menorah in their homes. A tribute to Flavius Josephus, who described the Hebrews who were deported from Jerusalem and brought to Rome as slaves, the most valiant had to fight as gladiators in the Colosseum. The Jews never succumbed to the temptation of idol worship, yet today, at the heart of Christianity, it is they who have the monopoly on selling icons. Homage to the victims of Hadrian, Villa Adriana. In the Campidoglio, Roberto Di Segni. They are all here, Titus, Adrien, Alexandre Sever, and he's a Jewish peddler that I met in the market. This capacity to become the other and still remain oneself. The Hebrew Academy, Las Vegas. Egypt as the matrix of Western civilization and the place where the Jews were, for the first time, named as a people. The New York Psychoanalytical Society, 14 of the most famous New York psychoanalysts in the Holy of Holies of the Freudians, Vienna in Manhattan. Before I went to America, I asked myself if I could gather 40 people who have shaped America in the late 20th century, and who have influenced Western culture. It was only by the end of this second year journey in America that I finally photographed all 40 of them with this modern day Alexandria in the background. Jews escaped pogroms at the end of the 19th century and left Lithuania. Many of them went to South Africa. The Krog brothers, casino owners in Johannesburg. Steve Cohen, drag queen, Johannesburg. Johannesburg, South Africa. I arrived for the first time 
And my very first meeting was with Brenda, who teaches Jewish cooking to black maids. I had already visited Argentina, and I went back in 1999 because I wanted to see Moisesville, the place where, at the end of the 19th century, Jews who escaped pogroms in Russia went to find a refuge and to build a better world. I went there, but when I came back to Buenos Aires, I met some Madres de Desaparecidos, Mothers of the Missing. I wanted to show that despite the pogroms they escaped, despite the dictatorship, despite the terrorist bombings, they still choose to live in Buenos Aires. Hartmut Bonhoff, Potsdam, Germany. Back in Europe. It took me 23 years to face what I had managed to elude by escaping the very continent where I was born. Finally, I had to confront loss and mourning. Grunewald Station, Berlin, David Epstein. Davide Calimani, Venice. Vanda Reisel, Amsterdam. Hetty Berg, Amsterdam. Gerald Godfrey, London, judge, decorated with the Order of the British Empire for 15 years of loyal service to Her Majesty the Queen. Elfriede Jelinek, Stephansdom. When Herzl thought that the only solution to the Jewish problem would be a mass conversion to Christianity, his idea was that all Jews would be brought to this cathedral for conversion. And yet, one year later, he changed his mind and he wrote a book offering a different solution, Alt Neuland, envisioning the creation of a Jewish state. Frederica Habsburg, Vienna, convert to Judaism. Peter Menasse, Vienna, and the attic were still remain the castes which, up until not long ago, were part of the display of an exhibition on the theory of races developed in Vienna. My journey started in Jerusalem, in a recreation of an Eastern European shtetl in the heart of the Middle East, on the day of Purim. My journey ends almost 25 years later, also on Purim. There are no more Jews in Tikochin, where, during the Holocaust, two southern Jews were brought to the main square of the village and then led in a procession to the forest and slaughtered in two days. Today, in Tikochin, a group of Catholic Poles, from the truck driver to the priest, dress up as Jews on Purim. Hong Kong, Purim, on the last piece of reclaimed land, Michael and Michelle Cohen, teachers. In front of the Tiananmen Gate, the Jewish community of Beijing. If nations define themselves by and through territory, then the territory must be protected. And so you have this wall running 6,000 miles, and there is a people who believe we all protect territories which do not exist. And the only reality is this journey, the book, the word, 